way it treats its animals. And by allowing this practice to continue, we have not been setting a good example. What's really involved, who's really responsible for what? Um, what the bill does, it restores the laws, what is in the law? Uh, language. And there really is never a good reason for a cat. Yes, I introduced this bill about four and a half years ago and it's very important because cats have their first, up to their first knuckle amputated and that is what cat declawing is. It's not taking off the nail, it's amputation. Uh, people are very susceptible to infections by cat scratches, infants, things like that. So to just pass a blanket piece of legislation not being able to account for what's in somebody's specific house uh, is pretty difficult in my mind. So uh, I know a number of vets are against it, and so I just felt that it was just a little bit of government overreach. We're incredibly proud to call New York the first state to ban declawing statewide. Uh, it's going to be really wonderful for the um, humane care of cats and kittens that will no longer have to be subjected to such a cruel uh, procedure. Often they'll have behavior issues like litter box issues, fear issues, sometimes there are even aggression issues that can appear after a cat's declawed. She's very shy. Yeah, there's a bite. Um, so we actually, actually have a cat in our care right now that's declawed and she's much shyer than the rest of the cats. She seems to be a bit timid around people at first and really when you declaw a cat you're removing their natural defense system so it can often make them fearful and nervous about new interactions. The process of declawing is cruel and inhumane and there's really no place for it in modern veterinary medicine.